I managed to put on over 10 kilos in just about three months on my bulk and went from 63 kilos up to 75. And here's how I did it. Now, I don't even think that I'm a genetic outlier at all. I think I have the most average genetics ever, but it's all possible. And I'm gonna reveal the four things that I personally fixed in order to do what I did. But before we jump into the video, guys, I do want to let you know that you can cop my training plan that I used to put on that 10 kilos down in the links below in the description. Um, that was the exact training plan that I used whilst doing that block of bulking. Completely free. All you have to do is click the link down below. Now, these four things are A, tracking your calories and macronutrients. B, eating high calorie dense meals and or consuming liquid calories. Three, making sure you're getting the adequate recovery in. And number four, having the damn patience. So like I was saying before, I literally, I don't think I'm any sort of genetic outlier. In fact, I used to make up all sorts of excuses as to why I couldn't bulk or why I thought I couldn't bulk. I went on a massive cut at the end of 2022 thinking that my metabolism was too fast and I was just gonna wait till I was older to bulk. Really, that was a silly thing to do because I think I could have been a lot further along in the journey um, if I had a chose to just build some muscle first, but it doesn't matter because now we're here. Now I've put on an extra 10 kilos. So first and foremost on this list, now, I don't care what anyone tells you, and you might even cop a bit of shit for this. I might even cop a bit of shit for this. But the number one thing that I recommend you do is track your calories and macronutrients. Now, a lot of people, for some reason these days, see this as some sort of mental eating disorder, tracking all the protein intake. Now, it's perfectly fine for people to be drinking, smoking cigarettes, and then sit down and smash a whole uh, family bucket of KFC for themselves. And yet, they give you shit for sitting down and tracking your calories and your protein intake and everything like that. It's absolutely absurd, but I can say with 100% confidence, it helps with the bulk. Now, the reason why, I know some people may be questioning that a bit, saying, why do you need to track calories on a bulk if you're not trying trying to restrict calories. Well, the reason being is you may not be eating enough. Now, I know that's hard for some people to hear because if I told that to myself a year ago, I wouldn't have believed you. I would have been like, I'm eating as much as I can and I'm not gaining weight. Well, the fact is you actually may not be eating enough because it wasn't until I started tracking my calories that I realized how little I was actually eating. Yes, I used to eat until my stomach felt full. I used to think I ate until I couldn't fit anymore. In reality, I wasn't even hitting the amount of required calories to fuel my body and to put on muscle. Now, and then of course, you can't just consume um, a massive calorie surplus and expect to build muscle without protein. So that's where the macronutrients come in and protein is part of the macronutrients. You do obviously need to eat protein in order to build muscle. If you consume at least 1.5 grams of protein per kilo of body weight, and you combine that with a calorie surplus, then I can almost guarantee that you will start to build muscle and gain weight. And the beauty is that there's apps these days where you can do it completely for free. For example, I use MyFitnessPal. You can track your calories on there for absolutely free. And they've got a barcode scanner, which makes things even easier as well. And if you're doing a lot of meal prep, you can even enter the ingredients you use and you can create meals. So literally, if you eat the same thing every single day, you can vlog the next day's food before you even start the next day of eating. So it honestly doesn't have to take that much more time. And at the end of the day, it comes down to how bad do you really want your goals and are you willing to do anything to achieve them? Now, moving on to my second point, which kind of ties into all of the calorie tracking and everything. What you guys wanna be doing is consuming calorie dense meals and or lots of liquid calories. Now, the reason being is it's all good and well to think that you're gonna be able to put on heaps of muscle just eating literal salads and 200 to 300 calorie meals. But the reality is that you would have to eat over 10 times per day. Now, I know for a lot of people that just isn't going to work. Not everyone has the time to dedicate themselves to sitting down 10 times a day and eating 10 different meals. So if you're someone like me who is extremely skinny and hates eating and doesn't really want to spend hours per day eating, then I suggest you make high calorie dense meals. This is stuff that will be over 600 calories for a serving, stuff that you can absolutely pile down where you only have to eat 
three to four times per day and you'll hit your protein and calorie goals. Most likely you will have to sacrifice some cleanliness of your diet. You won't be able to eat 100% purely, but it's just something that you've got to weigh up and it's just something that you have to factor into it. So for example, I really love pasta and chicken. Personally, I make massive amounts of basil pesto chicken and pasta. And one of the meals that I make comes out to about 860 calories with 60 grams of protein uh, per plate. And that means that I literally only have to eat three or four times per day and I can reach my calorie and protein goal. The next half of that equation is liquid calories because liquid calories are such an easy way to get your calories and macros in because it's so much easier to drink than it is to eat. So what I do every morning is I start my day off with a protein shake that consists of protein powder, banana, Greek yogurt and milk. And that comes out to about 650 calories as well. So paired with some egg on toast or raisin toast or something. And I'm looking at about a 900 calorie to a thousand calorie breakfast. And in my personal opinion, as long as you're keeping your diet at least like 70% clean, don't be afraid to opt for the optional pizza in the afternoon if it means you can reach your goals. Now let's jump into topic number three, which is recovery. And this is gonna be extremely important if you're a natural athlete such as myself. Now, the reason being is when you are taking PEDs, your recovery abilities is actually far greater than someone of a natural athlete. So they can train a lot harder and a lot more frequently and their muscles can recover quickly. However, as a natural, it's going to take your muscles longer to recover. So if you're training seven days a week, chances are you are overtraining and you're actually putting your body under more stress than what it needs to be and it will really struggle to build muscle and you could experience similar things even if you're training at six days a week, depending on how hard you're going and what sort of split you're doing. But for me personally, I found that my sweet spot is five days per week of actual training. And this allows me two days per week of recovery. And recovery for me has been absolutely crucial. Now the reason why it's so important is because your body actually builds the muscle when it is recovering. That's the whole point of going to the gym. You create those micro tears in your muscles and as you recover, that's when protein synthesis is going to kick in and that's when your muscles are gonna repair and come back even bigger. So what are some ways that you can take care of your recovery and improve it? Well, it's pretty simple. Sleep is definitely the biggest thing. Um, a lot of people say you need eight hours of sleep. I personally find that I can get away with seven, but I wouldn't go any lower than seven because there are real studies showing the side effects of sleep deprivation. And one of the massive ones is a hindrance to protein synthesis and your body's ability to recover. So if you can get at least seven hours of sleep and also focus on your sleep quality as well, because the better quality of your sleep means you're going to feel more recovered the next day. Now the world of recovery itself is so huge and there's so many different things you can do like magnesium supplements, magnesium baths, cryotherapy, ice baths. There's so many different things but I recommend you guys um, experiment with you know two to three different little recovery things that makes you guys feel relaxed because the whole point is to reduce those cortisol levels which is your stress hormone and make sure that you can recover optimally. So find out what it is for you that works and then just do that. And last but not least, the final part of the equation we're gonna be talking about is of course, having the damn patience. You guys need to chill the hell out. So many people go to the gym for like two to three weeks and expect to put on like five kilos. And I can assure you guys, it's just not gonna happen. Now, of course, you are gonna have your genetic outliers as well that'll build much more naturally. But if you guys are like me and you have average genetics, the quickest I'd say you're going to be bulking without putting on too much fat at the same time is about one kilogram per week, which means over 12 weeks, you're going to build somewhere around 12 kilos of extra mass. Now, again, that's not going to be pure lean muscle tissue. 
but it is gonna make you look bigger. You are going to put on size, and the aim of the game is to try reduce excessive fat gain, but also put on some muscle at the same time. To me personally, that's what I was doing. I was putting on about one kilo per week, and it took me about 12 weeks to see some real progress. There's also some research out there that indicates the max rate of protein synthesis can occur is about a quarter of a kilo per month. It's so really, if you're gonna bulk and you're gonna eat six, seven, eight thousand calories per day, you might wanna just reconsider it. Just because you eat more doesn't mean you're necessarily going to accelerate protein synthesis since you can only put on a certain amount. And if you do want to go for more of a lean bulk and you want to really keep that fat off your body, you can opt for a smaller calorie surplus, but just know that that is going to take you even longer as well. So you may even want to allow for double the time frame if you're going to go on a leaner bulk. You will experience weight fluctuations, you know, with water retention, especially if you're experimenting with creatine and you're gonna have some off days where you just burn more calories and you're gonna have some days where you may just hold a bit more weight. So make sure you guys tune your mindset in, have a bit of patience, maybe even get an accountability partner, take some progress photos and just trust the bulk and trust the process. This is what I looked like at the start of my bulk, 63, and this is what I look like now at 75. So I personally put on about 12 10 to 12 kilos within the space of three to four months. And another thing you wanna be careful of is social media. Social media will have you believe that you can go from looking like this to looking like C-bum within nine months of training. But in reality, most people that you see on TikTok are either A, genetic outliers, B, have been training for five years plus, or C, on PEDs, because the algorithm pushes the best of the best, and it's only going to show the best of the best. You guys have to realize that the average guy is not walking around like C-bum. Like I said before, just trust the process. You will build muscle slowly, and after about that three months mark, you'll start to see some real good progress but don't expect to be jacked or look like C-bum in the space of less than 12 months. It takes about two to three years to build a really good physique and be considered what most people would say is jacked naturally. So guys, there you have it. Those are the main four things that I implemented in my plan when going on a bulk. So I hope this really helps you out guys. And if you guys implement any of this, let me know in the comments section below. Check us a follow on Instagram as well. I'd love to know about your fitness journey and I'd love for you guys to keep me up to date with some of your journey as well. So yeah, with that all being said, guys, hope you all enjoyed this one and I'll catch you in the next video.